let the gentlelady get situated. The gentlelady from Missouri is recognized. Uh, thank you. Uh, I move to strike the last word. Gentlelady, uh, gentlelady is recognized. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, St. Louis and I are here today in support of genuine community safety and in opposition to hollow, hypocritical attempts to distract from policies that make our communities less safe. That's exactly what this resolution is. It's an empty and desperate ploy by Republicans to avoid responsibility for policies they support that are getting people killed in St. Louis and across this country. So let's set the record straight on a few things. First off, the party of insurrection has zero credibility. Zero credibility when it comes to protecting law enforcement officers. It was a Republican president who incited the January 6th insurrection and coup attempt because he refused to accept that he lost the 2020 election. It was Republican politicians who enabled January 6th by peddling lies about the election. And it was a mob who supported these Republicans that stormed the Capitol and violently assaulted law enforcement officers. If Republicans cared about violence against law enforcement, they would be marking up a resolution condemning themselves. But the fact is that Republicans don't care about violence against law enforcement, and they really don't care about law enforcement at all. They will support any number of abuses that law enforcement inflicts on communities like St. Louis, but as soon as a law enforcement agency takes a single step towards holding them and their cult leader, Donald Trump, responsible for their criminal behavior, that agency becomes public enemy number one. So Republicans don't care about law enforcement. They support mass incarceration for black and brown communities and freedom from accountability for themselves. And it is sickening to hear Republican politicians talk about public safety while they contribute to the, <laughs> to the crisis of violence in this country. As I have pointed out many times in this committee, the states with the weakest gun laws, like my own in Missouri, have Republican legislatures and governors and the highest rates of gun violence in our country. Republicans also take every opportunity they get to spread fear and distrust in our communities. These moral and policy failures have resulted in firearms flooding municipalities that are unable to override those state level policies and an American public that is on a hair trigger and primed for violence. So let's get it straight. Republicans are the arsonists, not the firefighters. They don't get to enable violent insurrection and rampant gun violence and police brutality and then show up and pretend like we should just listen to anything they say about policing and public safety. It is a farce and it's a distraction from policies that will actually save lives. Those policies do not invest in violence. They invest in communities. They recognize that we will never incarcerate ourselves to safety. They will support non-police first responders, mental health and counseling resources, community-based employment programs, community violence prevention and interruption programs, after school programs, substance use treatment programs, public health and other wraparound services, affordable food and housing, more parks and green spaces and re-entry programs. That's just to name a few. So that's exactly why I introduced the People's Response Act, which would establish a division of community safety within the Department of Health and Human Services to research and fund evidence-based strategies that are proven to prevent violence and effectively manage crisis situations. So unlike these Fox News talking points, the PRA is a real proposal with real solutions that will save lives in St. Louis and nationwide. And it's not only, a, it's not only this proposal, there are pro proposals that adopt a community-based approach to public safety. Many of my Democratic colleagues have introduced proposals that would break the cycle of violence, invest in mental health resources, support counselors, not criminalization, ensure housing for all, and support other non-carceral interventions that would make a material difference 
in people's lives. But we're not here today to consider real solutions that will make people's lives better. Uh -uh. We're here as a distraction from the sad truth that dangerous MAGA Republican policies make us less safe. They deprive us of basic investments that would move us closer to a genuine community safety. And at the end of the day, Republicans refuse to consider those investments because Republicans are not seeking solutions to the problem. Gentlelady's time. They are the problem. Thank you, and I yield back. Gentlelady's time has expired. The gentlelady yields back. Mr. Speaker. Gentlemen from Ch Louisiana, uh, recognize. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Actually, the gentleman, from, the gentleman from New Jersey is recognized to yield to the gentleman. Would you yield? The gentleman from New Jersey yields to the gentleman from Louisiana. I thank the gentleman from New Jersey. Um, I, I want to welcome Ms. Bush to the committee. Did she leave already? Oh. Is she still here? That's unfortunate. I, I was going to point out to her a, a couple of ironies. Uh, she came to lecture us. She was here for five minutes and three seconds. I appreciate her time investment. She came to lecture us about, quote, avoiding responsibility. We've had four full committee markups. She has not attended three of the four. I'm not sure today her five minutes counts as an attendance, but let's say she's, she's made two of them now. Um, I was going to ask her if she's still in favor of defunding the police because we have her on record more times than I can count of having been the great champion of that. She wanted to talk about responsible investments that will make a difference. I wanted to ask her how that defunding police thing worked out. Uh, I think everybody in the country knows what, that we're facing chaos and, and uh, a catastrophe of crime, violent crime, in all the major cities that she went and, and, uh, and protested in and many more that took the cue. I wanted to ask her about the reality of how that works out in real life. You know, she accuses us of engaging in talking points. We're trying to pass meaningful legislation to solve these problems. And she is uh, advancing policies and ideas that create the mayhem. So, wow, it's so unfortunate that she's not here to engage in a colloquy on that. But I'm not surprised. This is what we get from the radical left. She is part of that radical left. Um, that is bringing down the party and having them associated with the crime crisis that we have on the streets. This is the very reason that we need Police Week, to reinforce our support for the brave men and women who are on the front lines, that thin blue line, who put their, their lives on the line every single day, and we lose them now at alarming rates, in the line of duty, trying to protect their communities from wacko, crazy, maddening policies like the ones that Ms. Bush has supported in Congress. I will also point out, she, as we noted earlier, she was the vice chair of the Crime Subcommittee of Judiciary, and she doesn't believe in funding police. What a tragedy that she's not here to join us. I yield back. Yeah. Will the gentleman yield? Thank you. Um, I will. I just I need about a minute here. Um, you know what strikes me as, I, I don't want to use the word humorous. I, I don't know what else to use. You all were in charge for two years. You had the presidency. You had the House, you had the Senate, you controlled it all, you could do pretty much anything that you wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And all I remember happening, I was out there, I was on the street talking to my people, I remember what happened in Congress was to demean, diminish, defund, uh, despise the police. And now you say a wholly, totally different thing. And then you have somebody else come along, and I don't know her very well, who stays here for five minutes after most of us on both sides have been here for hours at least trying to hash this out. She says some real mean stuff and walks away. And guess what? That real mean stuff's not going to work. That's not the real world. You need law and order. You need police. You need safety, and you know what? I do have some urban areas in my district and rural, and you know what? In my district, when I talk to people, whether they're Vietnamese, whether they're black, whether they're Hispanic, I say, what's the number one issue? And they constantly say, like the city of Atlantic City, they want better lighting, they want more safety, they want more police. They want to be safe. They don't want their kids to get hurt. They don't want their stores to get robbed. And you all were against that. And you had control of everything. Well, would the gentleman yield? Well, gentleman. I, I will yield. I have to yield to my friend, uh, Ms. Matt Gates, first. Uh, thank Gates. the gentleman for yielding, Mr. Chairman. I think what we just observed was a drive-by committee presence from the gentlelady from Missouri. And what I would reflect on is that if someone is the victim of an armed robbery, they don't need a green space. 
They need a local government willing to fund their local police department. If someone is about to be stabbed, as one of the witnesses was at our field hearing in New York, they don't need a therapist. They need force to be able to respond back, and they need the law on their side, which is why I've introduced a national stand your ground bill that I believe the committee ought to hear. And if your car's being broken into, you don't need wraparound services. You need a detective. Day in and day out, people in the communities run by Democrats feel less safe. And the reason they feel less safe is because they don't feel like the law is on their side. And by the way, funding up the FBI and the ATF and the censorship industrial complex at the, at the DHS isn't what they need. It's local police, and those are the folks whose backs we have and who you all have spent years denigrating. Would gentlemen yield? Gentlemen's time has expired. Gentlemen. Does the, does the gentleman wish to speak on the bill, or we got an amendment coming? I, yeah, you know, I, 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 I mean, I'll recognize if you. I, think I appreciate it, Mr. Right. Chairman. I, I, I just want to say this. I mean, I, I think the, the rhetoric's over the top down there. I mean, I was a prosecutor for 12 years. Um, I've been endorsed by the FOP every time I've run for office. People in my jurisdiction, by the way, don't want to get rid of the FBI and the ATF. They're very glad that we have them. When I was a prosecutor, we coordinated our prosecutions with them. It's called Project Exile. I believe it was started by the Bush administration, by the way. Uh, but we tried to do that to get gun offenders off the streets and to make sure that serial offenders got more jail time because they got more serious sentences in the, in the federal courts. The FBI and the ATF led those efforts in those prosecutions, and by the way, the Sinaloa cartel takedown that just happened two weeks ago, there were no local police involved with that. You know why? They don't have jurisdiction to do it. FBI, ATF, Homeland Security, all, all were involved in, in, those process, in, in that takedown. To, to, when you guys complain about not, you know, not doing enough to stop fentanyl, guess who it is that's working? It? It's FBI, it's ATF, it's D, DEA, all these federal agencies that you want to get rid of. We need them to do that work. I think we also need the local police to do the work, too. And, and if, you find, if you find some place where Glenn Ivey said defund the police, I'd love to see it. Uh, but I think we need both. I'm glad that you all see the need to have, I, I think I'm hearing today, lo, a federal law enforcement handle cases as well. We need the Department of Justice. We need the FBI. We need the ATF. We need the DEA. We need help from all of them to deal with the major international problems that we've got going. I yield back. Gentleman yields back. Chair recognizes himself. Yield to the gentleman from Florida. Uh, I, th I thank the gentleman for yielding. And I wouldn't want anyone uh, in the minority on the committee to be of the view that we think that every single Democrat holds the defund the police view. Matter of fact, we, we don't think that. And I think the gentleman was correct in referencing we've got Democrats who've been a part of keeping our community safe, and we thank you for that. You're patriots for offering to do that. But when the Democratic Party elevates to the position of chair of the crime subcommittee, the very leader of the defund police movement, you don't have to be for the defund police movement to be supportive of, I think, some pretty like dangerous platforming of ideas that make people in our communities less safe. And there's been much discussion of these crime rates. And what I've noticed is that in some places, the crime rate may be higher in red places because those crimes are actually acknowledged practically with arrests and criminal process, would, would where the, in a lot of places like New York, things like shoplifting aren't even a crime anymore. Would, would the gentleman yield for a moment? I would. Would you agree that it's helpful to have the FBI, the ATF, the DEA, and the Department of Justice to prosecute federal crimes? Would you oh, think I, it's a good I, idea to keep yeah, them around? Just as you've not called to defund the local police, I haven't called to completely defund the well, FBI. What I've said is if they no. don't come to heal, and no. if they're not responsive no, no, no. and constrained by you, their authorities, because you, Mr. Ivey, I think it is fair. Gentleman from Florida I, 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 think, I think it is fair to be critical of an ATF that imposes zero tolerance on people, and then they lose their own guns. They uh, keep records in the well, hundreds of thousands. They're not with the gentleman you, and then they don't. Then I just want to ask about your legislation. Yeah, your legislation is one line. Yeah, and all it says is 
we're going to shut down the ATF. I, I, it doesn't say anything about all of the other stuff you just well, mentioned. Well, that's all because I was talking about the FBI. Shut it down. As, to the, as to the ATF, I would invite your co-sponsorship to that legislation. I think it's crazy. Why would you want to defund the ATF? Because, because the ATF has so greatly exceeded their authority, they are punishing regular Americans with no basis and soaked in the hypocrisy of seizing documents and holding records that even the, the Department of Justice, the vaulted Department of Justice that you talk about, their own inspector general is hammering the ATF. And so that's, that's why I think they, they maybe need a shot across the bow. But the, the well, folks oh, out in our communities the, the that are, battle, that are battling the, against Actually, the time belongs to me. I yield to the gentleman. The floor. folks that are out in, in, our, in our communities, like the witnesses at our field hearing, they count on a cop in their community, and they count on a local government able, able, willing, determined to fund those local cops. And you heard from an investigator for, that represented a lot of the detectives out of New York tell you how the advocacy of these policies, which I certainly would agree, not every Democrat holds, well, but, but well, your leadership. Would, would the gentleman yield embrace, for a moment? Certainly. Okay, so your bill, which you just called a shot across the, bra the bow, Correct. you fund ATF. You think that's a good message to law enforcement? I think it's a good message to the folks at ATF who are breaking the law. Well, I tell you what, let's target them. I don't think you have to I shut down. To. The, hold on. You don't have to shut down the whole agency to, to address any bad apples. That's but, the same thing with police departments. But similarly, at the local Mr. Ivey, but similarly, that's you what don't have IG's to maintain the entire agency to do the things that you've talked about regarding the Sinaloa cartel. Just as you, as you may suggest, not every single person at the ATF is a bad person, and I don't think they are. I don't think you need to keep the entire apparatus either. So yes, on the continuum of the ATF, I believe they have done more harm than good when it comes to people's civil liberties, and when it comes to some of these other federal agencies, they do need to come to heel. So that, by the way, Democrats used to believe in civil liberties. You guys used to actually think that when government overreached and violated people's constitutional rights, there was a bad I, I, thing. I, I must say, we, and we you still guys, do. You guys, you, we still do. As so long I, I, as these federal agencies will go after Trump and Republicans, they seem to get a lot more attention from you. I, I, I got to say, I've, I've been at this a lot longer than when Trump was president. And we've been able to challenge the FBI, the ATF. I've been on both sides of this. When they crossed the line, you prosecute them. You, you fire them. Well, you deal with but that. But see, all we can do is defund but them. But saying you're going to shut the, the whole thing down. But our power is the power of the purse, and we have to be able to use it. And that way, if you've did been you on ever, both sides of this issue. Did you send a letter to the IG if, if, saying you need to target these bad apples in particular? We send so many letters to the IG highlighting the things that we're finding in our investigations. And if you've been on both sides, what I would say is, what are you waiting for to get back on our side, on the correct side. I, I wanna, side I'm waiting to get back on the majority so we can actually focus on laws well, when that, you are in the majority, that deal, that you guys deal with do gun violence to protect people's rights and bring down the gun these violence. agencies by, by with all the, the powers that they've now weaponized against the people. By, by the way, gentlemen's time has expired. The chair recognized the gentlelady from Pennsylvania. Thank you so much. I've got an amendment at the desk. Uh, clerk will report. I'll reserve a point of order. From Florida Reserve. Amendment to H. Conrez 40 offered by Ms. Scanlon of Washington. Without objection, the amendment will be considered as read. The gentlelady from Pennsylvania is recognized to speak on her amendment. Thank you. Uh, we've now seen multiple amendments ruled out of order because they referred to law enforcement other than local law enforcement. And at least one of our colleagues across the aisle described a secondary purpose of the bill to honor local police who've been demoralized by criticism of local police. So this amendment, which is a version of the amendment offered previously by Ms. Jayapal, would strike the entire text of the resolution and replace it with language that expresses support for the courageous local law enforcement officers of the Metropolitan Police who stepped up to defend the U.S. Capitol on January 6, 2021. And I'm thinking particularly of Michael Fanone, who was beaten, tased so much his heart stopped, and almost shot with his own gun as he defended this building and our democracy from violent attackers who'd been fed a big lie about the 2020 presidential election by the former president and some of his supporters. How much more demoralizing must it be to defend the lives of members of Congress who then say that the violent mob that injured hundreds of brave police were just tourists? and to question efforts to hold those violent attackers 
um, accountable. So if my colleagues want to honor local law enforcement who may have been demoralized by criticism, let's start by having all of Congress recognize the bravery of the local law enforcement officers who protected everyone in this building and our democracy on January 6, 2021, unless, of course, that's not really the purpose of this resolution. I yield back. Gentlelady yields back. Gentleman from Florida is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Regrettably, I must insist on my point of order, despite sharing the sentiments the lady suggested in support of local law enforcement. The amendment would introduce material beyond the scope of the purpose of the bill before us and therefore violates Rule 16, Clause 7. Yield back. Gentleman yields back. Gentleman from New York is recognized as ranking member. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. I, oh. or I can go first. Go, go, go to her first. Okay. I, 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 Pennsylvania. Just I don't believe that a, a point of germaneness has been stated here. Uh, this is completely germane, and we haven't heard a reason why it's not. Will the it talks yield? about local law enforcement. Will the gentlelady yield? Sure. The gentleman from Louisiana is recognized. I mean, it's, it's quite obviously not germane. It's a January 6th resolution, and if you want to bring a January 6th resolution, bring it. But it's not germane to the, to the underlying bill that is not talking about an event. It is talking about support for local law enforcement. This is not complicated. Reclaiming you guys are making my time. It very complicated. I agree it's not complicated. You so have put forward a resolution that talks about particular we're, events and local law enforcement. We're talking, every about, time we're talking about the point of order. I've reclaimed my time. It's not and your we're time. Talking it's about it's the point talking of about order. the point of order. I recognize Mr. Mr. Johnson to talk about the point of order. We now. Oh, you yield. Okay, the yes. gentleman is recognized. Thank you. It, you know, look, you're just moving the moving the goalposts here. Every time we bring another amendment, these are germane. You just don't want to talk about the underlying issues. No, I, I, mean, I would you like. You can vote us down all day. You've got the you've got the majority. Although I'm afraid I'm going to have to go to rules because your colleagues coming back from New York, so you yield? finally have the votes. Would the general lady yield? Would the general lady yield? Who, who, uh, th I thank the general lady for yielding, and I must agree with her. I have never seen such a rank demonstration of hypocrisy in the 30 years I've been here. You have ruled every perfectly in order resolution out of order. You have ruled it out of order for law enforcement officer to, to deal with law enforcement officers who responded to the Capitol on January 6th. You have ruled it or, out of order to recognize legislation that police officers, uh, su groups also support. You have ruled it out of order to support federal law enforcement officers. When we, I have been here 30 years, I have never seen such a, uh, a raft of dishonest rulings intended simply because you don't want to vote on the, on the underlying uh, 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 messages. You don't want to vote to support the police officers on January 6th because you don't want to admit that January 6th was a right-wing pro-Trump riot. You don't want to recognize federal law enforcement because that would include January 6th. This is entirely out of order. You have the votes to do it. But it is a, 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 an abuse of the worst kind that I've ever seen. When I was chairman, I certainly bent over backwards to, rec to, to find ways of, of calling things in order when they were on the, uh, on the edge. This is rank hypocrisy, and it is frankly disgusting. And I yield back to the gentlelady. I yield back. Does anyone seek recognition? Uh, the, the, the chair would just comment, Mr. Nadler, the, the underlying legislation refers specifically to local law enforcement. It does not reference any particular uh, event. And by, change, by this amendment diverts the whole meaning of this and, and makes it about one particular event. The and so it yield? is there. It's not germaneness, Mr. Chairman. With the That's gentleman yield, it, it, does, it does reference a particular event, the summer of 2020 looting, rioting, and violence in major cities. That, that, That's a particular event. No, that is a trend, a societal trend. That is not a specific, specific event, a specific date. It talks about two th your, your the summer of 2020, looting, rioting, and violence in major cities during the summer of 2020. The That's a very specific reference. The material that is introduced by this amendment is beyond the scope and purpose of the very simple bill before us. So Mr. you Chairman, say every, to every resolution hypocritically. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to be heard on the point of order. Gentlemen's recognized. I, I'd like to uh, 
I'd stand with Mr. Nadler, our ranking member, and his um, grave disappointment in the Republican effort to rule every single Democratic effort to acknowledge the extraordinary men and women law enforcement on January 6th as being not germane. And now we're left with this final amendment. Oh, no, I have one more. This, this most recent amendment, which as a result of your rulings speaks specifically about local police on that day. Now, the underlying resolution doesn't say we praise all police on every day, local police on every day, except January 6th. It says local police. And lo and behold, the offered amendment references an event, in fact, in which the gentlewoman from Pennsylvania would like to recognize and praise local police. And simply because you don't want to discuss January 6th, the argument is being made it's not germane. It is more information about the underlying resolution, that is praising police. And this time it's not even about state or federal, it's about local police. An amendment is of the same subject matter if it's related to the underlying resolution. It clearly is. Unless you're prepared to say you can't offer an amendment that doesn't do anything other than recite the words of the existing amendment, which means it's not an amendment. That's, that's what you're ruling. This is clearly germane. And the rulings you make today, Mr. Chairman, you will live with when you're back in the minority. And Mr. Nadler is quite right. I sat through those hearings where we painstakingly considered every amendment offered by the Republicans, and Mr. Nadler ruled over and over again that they were germane and they were voted down. But you had that opportunity. The decisions you are making today are doing real damage to this institution and you are going to rue the day because you will be in the minority and probably will behave responsibly and still allow your amendments to go forward because that's how we roll because we actually believe in this institution. We believe in the rule of law. We believe in the fair administration of the proceedings in this Judiciary Committee. But you have two more opportunities to vindicate yourself by ruling this, Jermaine, and the next one that I'm about to give you. And with that, I yield back. Thank you, my friend, for yielding back. I am prepared to rule. Uh, the, the gentlelady's amendment does not satisfy the subject matter and fundamental purpose test. Surprise! Beca because, thank you, Mr. Ranking Member, because it does quite clearly expand the scope and purpose of the bill before us. I know you disagree, but the chairman's prerogative. It's therefore not germane. It is out of order. Uh, who seeks recognition? I appeal. The, the, I appeal the lady moves to appeal. Gentleman uh, moves to table.